Hi, welcome to a very short video on how to write files from Node-RED that can be picked up from any PC that's connected to a browser. That's only possible in the factory in a box when we've upgraded it. And the upgrade instructions are in our confluence area. But um, this is something that we've done with this version, version 1.25. As well as upgrading the version, we've also uh, made the uh, settings.js file accessible. So as well as, I think we've already talked about PG Admin 4, about the backup and restore. So this particular one we'll focus on, on Node-RED and Node-RED alone. So the area that we're going to look at is, if we look in our file directory, once, once we've updated the whole factory in the box, containers, uh, we will find that we now have four, I'll just do ls minus al, we have four uh, links or sim links with simple names like mosquito dash data, node red dash data, pg admin dash data and postgres dash data uh, pointing to docker volumes. Now the permissions have been changed um, so that's accessible by the user pi. However, the contents of those files actually often, are often, or mo in most cases, are created by the container user. So instead of seeing pi, you'll see things like 1001, so the user ID and the group ID, because they don't exist on, on this um, uh, in this operating system. So um, that makes some access a little bit awkward. However, let's change directory to node red to node red data use tab completion it's much easier and we'll see that we have a static directory and a user directory now let's change to the static directory and we'll find in our static directory we have uh, some eChart JavaScript libraries already available rather than having to get them from the internet uh, and a readme text file so if we let, look at that readme text file We'll see the contents of it, and it's basically says it's a static. This is a static files directory for Node Red. So that's the contents of that file. Let's see if we can access that now. The directory that uh, that it's linked to, which is forward slash Node Red forward slash static, is has been set in the settings.js file. We can show that. Let's do, and let, let's look at the permissions and who owns the file. Settings.js is owned by this user 1001 in the group 1001. So if we just try and do nano and try and edit it as a PI user, well, we can read it, but we can't write it, which is quite good. So at least we'll be able to see it. Um, if we wanted to write to it, we would have to use sudo. Um, and what I'm looking down for is to see the directory. So we've got the user directory and the nodes directory. Uh, a bit further down, we should find the static directory. Here we are. If we're, we're going to identify a directory of static content that should be served at the name of the uh, host machine, colon 1880, which is what we're not familiar with, but it's actually there's another forward slash, and then we should be able to find that those files. So if we go back to Node Red in our browser, and of course this browser could be open on any machine on the same subnet, uh, and we look at, well let's just change the uh, uh, directory, or maybe leave that there, I'll copy it and paste it in a new uh, on a new tab, and then just go to readme.txt it's there now this is a text file. Uh, there's a number of things you can do with it. You can either copy and paste it. So we can select them all. Um, copy or select that. Let's see. Just just unhighlight that. Oops. <laughs> now I've got the what have I got turned on? I've got. I'll just go back to this so we can see the uh, we can see the top line there. So it's not going to keep doing that. But if we just highlight one thing, we can right click and go select all. And just uh, select all. Uh, here we go. Save page as. That's quite handy. So that's what what we would want to do. So we can do it from save page as like that. Let's see how does that work. We make sure that we've only got one thing selected, or even just 
just the icon in just the, the mouse in the region so we've got save page as save page to pocket that command is available from here as well save page as and there's a shortcut Control s which i suppose is reasonable save um but there we go so that's how we can save a text file now that's not very useful for that static text file let's see what we can do now um see if we can write our data to a, a file well now we, we we are writing to our database but let's just see if we can simply write to a file as well and perhaps download that so we could do that straight from here um, this is the XB output however uh, the output of this node is more of a complex object and what we would ideally like is something that's simple to create a CSV file around and and the way to do it is to use a parser CSV parser and the storage node here for file or in fact this file in rather than not oh no, not file, this one sorry uh, writes the message payload to a file so let's see if we can find a more suitable source for our data that's and I think the simplest one we could use would be the data that's going to end up that's published as an MQT, uh, MQTT string so instead of this object like this if we recall we have an array and the array simply has a remote 16 address it has the data the digital samples the contents of this array here which is buried in the data object and it has the timestamp now I've shown on other videos how to simplify this function here and how to write the same function using JSON Arta, which is unbelievably easy. And I would encourage you to look at that, that one there. But the output of this function, as well as the JSON Arta based function, is exactly the same. So let's see how that looks as a CSV. So we'll use, we won't write it, we'll do it in two steps. We're not going to write it to the, um, to the, the uh, directory now. We'll just simply see what that looks like and the easiest ways to do that is to why well, they say no there's a little trick of course if you not if you can't recall if we have this payload or this debug node wired in and we simply drop the other node over it when the line goes dashed it will pick it up like that so let's see what the default values of this are well we've got column names available to us uh, that's actually useful if we if we want to create um, the or if we want to pull the data out of a complex object. But in our case, we're simply looking at an array. And if we look at the help file for this one, if the input is a simple array of simple values, it brings it builds a single line CSV string. And essentially, that's what we've got now. We've got an array of simple values. Um, I don't know if we need to be reminded what the output of that function is we can do that by this simply so in this case we'll get both of those when I deploy it let's turn that off for now let's deploy let's look at that debug message and maybe just try and get one message out of this for the next there we go so let's turn that off quickly so there are two things they both come from the same node if you look at the orange band around the and then when I hover over the node ID, you'll see which, which node it came from. But one is the message payload. So that's clearly going to be with the topic of Fire Machine CF1. That's, that's actually um, the MQTT array. And in fact, it's a, it's a, it is an array. It indicates it here. So that's our array with three values. And this, this is a string which is ready to go into our file our file our csv file so this is very simply a string comma separated and it includes a carriage return at the end so perfect let's get rid of this one and let's now add in a file function now i have done this before and i'm just going to highlight a couple of the problems that you can encounter with using this node let's just move it down because we want to make it a bit bigger so you can see what's going on so 
first off we need the file name now of course that's that's quite crucial uh, but if we and if we use um, the full path because it says here the file name should be an absolute path otherwise it will be relative to the working directory of the node red process now the node red process as far as I'm aware um, is going to run in node red but we also have the directory that we want to use which is static and then we could write in there but if we also want to create maybe a data directory we can do that straight away and let's just call this file that we're going to create the, an events file so all of the everything that passes through that function which will be normally published as an MQTT stream um, with that particular topic will get put into this events.csv file um, we want to append the f to the file. We don't need to add a new line because we've already got one. But we will want to create a directory if it doesn't exist. Now, this is very important. If it, if you don't, and if I think, or not I think, I'm pretty sure that if even if it's not a directory per se, if we just have the events, if we just finish off static and say events.csv, we still want to create and be able to write that because otherwise that file would have to exist already. And if we create the file and we aren't careful, we can leave it with the, and if we create it as a par user, we'd have to use sudo, and then it would belong to root. So we have to use we'd have to use the chown command to apply the or change the user and the group to a thousand and one, both a thousand one, a thousand and one. We can avoid all that issue if we just simply allow it allow Node Red to create the file or the directory if it doesn't exist encoding utf8 for example or the default we can also choose to write a binary file as well but we'll stick to utf8 and that's essentially it that should write row by row this will not have any headers it will not have a header row if we are appending to a file from the CSV, we don't want to keep appending the header. We'll just write it as it is, and we'll remember what we've written. Simple as that. We'll say done to that, and um, that should be ready to deploy. So let's deploy it. And if we ha if we allow that payload to to be published, I think we should still see the same same string as this. There we go. That's exactly the same as what we saw before. So let's turn that off and let's see what the effect of that was. We can see in two places, we should be able to find the file. Uh, here we have the readme text. We can use that same tab or we can, let's let's go on to, the, to here and let's uh, exit out of this file. Uh, let's look at, let's do an ls, look at the directory where you want to change directory to static and we should now have a data directory which we do and now we have an events file so ls minus al and it has some data in it let's see and it's still the same length oh it's gone up a little bit okay so we now we have an events.csv file that's been written to it's the ownership's all right i could read that because i've got permissions here to read it as a par user i can do cat events without any problems but that's not much good on the raspberry pi itself so let's see how we can get it into excel so let's go back to our browser and this browser is running on my pc and here we have the, the file we had we showed up already if we just change that instead of readme text to we need the data directory and we need events events.csv and depending on how you got your machine set up in fact here we go because of the extension um, because of the type of file it is it's automatically been picked up that it's uh, associated with excel and that's how that's the default file that's the default program for opening um, csvs there is one thing I just want to point out that you might find you, you if you're going to open it and look at it and then use it for other things. If you have fractions, for example, 
sometimes, well, not sometimes, but quite often Excel will ruin them and try and translate it into a date. And once that's done, it's very hard to, to, to forward it on. So you might want to open it with, if you want to look at it, with a uh, something like Notepad++. But that's fine. So let's just open it with Excel and see what it looks like. And Excel will pop up somewhere. In fact, great, it's popped up in the right window. Clearly, it thinks it's, it's, let's just turn that back into a number. Oh, wrong file, well, wrong, col wrong column. Let's turn that into a number. Let's lose the decimal places. And here we have the data that we've got. Uh, we can, uh, we can, we can, so our machine, we can do what we like with it. It's, uh, at the moment, it's read only. And off we go. So, there we, so that's how we can get data very, very simply from node red.